Since America's first president, there's always been a ceremony to mark the start of a new four-year term, whether that's for a new president or a president serving a second term. And while the 20th Amendment to the Constitution says the president must take the oath of office before noon on January 20th, everything else you normally see when the president is inaugurated is due to tradition. Here are some U.S. inauguration traditions. Every president since Jimmy Carter has signed the book at the Blair House before the inauguration ceremony begins. Outgoing and incoming presidents meet and sometimes take photos. In recent years, the outgoing president and president-elect ride together in the Capitol in a procession. This isn't required by the Constitution, but every president since George Washington has done it. They choose their own Bible. Barack Obama used the same one Abraham Lincoln used for his inauguration. The new president delivers a message to the nation, presenting their vision and setting goals for the term. The spiraling pace of change allows us to contemplate within our own lifetime advances that once would have taken centuries. And it's usually about unity, even after contentious elections. By your gracious cooperation in the transition process, you have shown a watching world that we are a united people, pledged to maintaining a political system which guarantees individual liberty to a greater degree than any other. This has occurred since Washington. And while some presidents keep their comments brief, William Henry Harrison spoke for about two hours in cold. It's a choice many believe indirectly attributed to his death from pneumonia a month later. Most outgoing presidents attend the inauguration ceremony, along with other important government figures. President Bush, <laughs> five presidents have not. The U.S. Marine Corps Band first performed at Thomas Jefferson's inauguration, and it was he who dubbed the band the President's Own. It traditionally performs four ruffles and flourishes, followed by Hail to the Chief during a 21-gun salute. The ruffles and flourishes for the Chief Executive, which now resides on the tested shoulders of uh, Harriet Truman. Your blessing upon thy servant. Since 1937, one or more prayers have been said during the inauguration ceremony. And a great cloud of witnesses are shouting in heaven. Some presidents also opt to go to prayer services before the ceremony. The new president and vice president watch participants from all 50 states in the District of Columbia perform in an inaugural parade. Then they travel down Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House. In 1977, Jimmy Carter became the first president to set out by foot on the route to the White House. Several have done it since. The new president and others eat a midday meal hosted by the leadership of the United States Congress following the inaugural ceremony. This has happened since 1953. We're used to seeing elaborate parties known as inaugural balls, but the first one wasn't held until 1809. The Washington Dancing Assembly organized it for James Madison's first inauguration. Now, the official events are planned and sanctioned by the Presidential Inauguration Committee. They are held in the evening, and only those with invitations can attend. That final dance paired with all the other events helps set the stage for a new presidential era.